Marina Torres. Marina has a fascinating life story. She came from parents that were undocumented, undocumented workers, and then went to Stanford Law School and became a federal prosecutor for the city of Los Angeles. And now she's running to be Los Angeles city attorney, where she's going to prosecute and be tough on low-level misdemeanor crimes like vandalism, but things that really affect our quality of life. I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. She has my vote. Go vote for Marina if you're in Los Angeles and if you want LA to be better. The two hottest issues is homelessness and crime. Give maybe your your concrete plan how you'd improve the situation. For crime, we really do need to focus on quality of of life crimes. Um, You know, folks have asked, you know, is this a broken windows theory again? And, you know, I I think it's maybe a modernized version of it. But I think it's a broken window theory. Maybe you can can break that down. What is that? So it's the idea that uh, urban blight is an indicator and and a contributor to bigger criminal activity. And so it was a philosophy that was popularized, I think, by Bloomberg. um, uh, I want to say in the 90s. And it meant, you know, going after the broken window. So if you saw somebody breaking a window, that meant, you know, was, you know, go after them because that, that's a broken window now, but it's going to be, you know, a robbed storefront later, right? A crime has a way of uh, increasing if, if you leave it unabated. We've all seen the social media videos of the Walmarts getting raided. And the I think I saw one of, the other day of Sephora, you know, people coming in with bags and just putting stuff in and being able to walk out. Th- these are now prevalent. Uh, so you're it, going to, you're going to be prosecuting the lower level crimes that previously weren't prosecuted. Absolutely. And look, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to, I want to make sure I'm not, you know, coming off as a hard line prosecutor because it's, this is not about going after people that, you know, are sitting on the bus stop and putting of them course. away for five I, years, right? Like no, we're not talking course. about that. But, you know, yeah, you shouldn't be able to walk into a store and load up a bag and just be able to walk away. I mean, there should be consequences to your actions. There's so many small business owners right now that are just closing up shop because these types of crimes are just no longer being prosecuted. And it, it's a it's a policy decision. It's an, it doesn't come from the officers, you know, but they mm-hmm. know that if they fill out this report, nothing's going to happen. And so they just no longer fill out the report you know and people know about this and so they keep continuing to do their criminal activity Mm -hmm. and you know these these business owners deserve to be able to to run a business you know these are oftentimes business owners that are immigrants working class communities of color um and they deserve the same protection that we give to the you know the the folks over on rodeo drive that can hire their own security for sure I think that an experiment was tried and people feel very disenchanted with it. From your perspective, homelessness, though, I'm trying to think myself, what would be something that you can actually implement or do? No, and you know, and I will note that we're in a landscape that's rapidly changing, right? I mean, just, uh, I think it was last year that the ordinance 4118 was passed. And so mm. different council districts are still, so it's an ordinance that makes it uh, illegal to um, be camping outside of certain areas. I believe it was uh, council member Joe Buscaino that, uh, that wrote it and, and pushed for it to pass. Harsh. Yes and no. I mean, it's conditioned on extending services first. And that is my belief. I mean, I think that before obviously you have any enforcement, there should be the extension of shelter, there should be an extension of services. Um, you know, and, and it, only once those are refused, and I want to make sure it's a credible offer, of course, of, of housing or shelter. But once those are refused, you know, People have a right to public access to their sidewalks. I mean, these encampments are such a, a, a site of suffering for so many people. The unhoused individuals themselves, the people that are living in the neighborhood, the schools that are there. It's just, it's it's astonishing to me that we as a society can look at them and these encampments, these people clearly suffering and think that that's okay for everybody, mm-hmm. right? And it's impacting yeah everyone so uh, enforcement is of course the role that the city attorney would would play but i think it's important um what are some ways that you can assure people that you're not going to be a corrupt politician in (laughs) city attorney's office well my friends are the ones writing the indictment so i i don't want to put them in that position (laughs) uh but all teasing aside uh, you know um, 
my origins are as a daughter of undocumented immigrants, right, from Mexico. I'm, I'm first generation. I learned English in kindergarten here in California. And when I got the opportunity to work for President Obama, it was on dreamer policy. It was on uh, helping folks that had a story very similar to my own, you know, parents that came here, uh, kids that had come here undocumented, uh, wanting a better life. And, and I feel like my entire life is a reflection of that, is a reflection of the American dream. Um, at, you know, as... I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. And I, and I bring that to the job. You know, my experience is, is you know, growing up impoverished and worried about deportation as a you know woman of color uh that too you know is something were you that really I mean, worried about deportation not myself my parents yeah i mean keep in mind like when i grew up uh proposition 187 had uh had i think passed or been implemented i remember when i was a kid having our teacher stand up and basically tell the class like don't worry we're not going to deport you if you're undocumented i mean this was you know third grade second grade i mean this is oh, yeah this is oh. a, this is a very i mean california's gone very far like we, we've moved along we've evolved but you know there there's those of us that grew up in that era that uh it's really hard to forget i remember what it was like when my parents got a speeding ticket or a parking ticket and you know having to decide well which utility bill are we not going to pay because we have to pay this and that's that's you know a perspective and an experience that, that i bring to the job that is an amazing perspective, really gritty, obviously, very inspiring, um, really, really inspiring. And I really, I hope that the next time we talk, um, either on my podcast or elsewhere, you know, we're celebrating that you won. <laughs> I, I Fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. Final question. How do you plan on using your background as a federal prosecutor to help the people in the city of Los Angeles? Let me give you an example. I mean, when I was a domestic violence prosecutor, I mentioned that, that you know, I handled domestic violence misdemeanors. So they weren't felonies, they were misdemeanors. And these were cases that oftentimes we could not file for whatever reason, we couldn't file them as felonies. And so we charged them as misdemeanors. But what we would do is we'd get creative in the charging and we would stack misdemeanors to be able to um, get the, a similar level of exposure as we would if we had prosecuted them and charge them as felonies. And I think that that's even more important now when you start to hear of cases that are just not being prosecuted out of the DA's office here within the city of Los Angeles. Those are cases, especially the ones involving victims, where we can take them in the city attorney's office and charge them as misdemeanors and perhaps stack the different charges, get creative about how we charge those cases to achieve justice for the victims in those cases.